In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here. It's from the 2024 Leaving Cert exam honours level paper one. If you're looking for a different question from that paper, you should be able to find a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing. But it's we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage, pause, rewind, stop, rewatch, all those things you can do on YouTube. If you find this video useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, and what helps most is sharing it with a friend that's doing the Leave a Cert or one that's going to do it next year. Question six starts off with this algebra question. They give you a function here, hx, and they tell you that uh, x minus four is a factor of this function, and they ask you to find out what b is, what, what number is b. Now, I could think of uh, three different ways to do this. Um, two easy-ish ways, so I'll, I'll show you both of them. And one, um, well not hard, but just longer way to do it. That uh, was the first way I did. Oh yeah, of course, um, if this is a factor, x minus four is a factor, that means x equals four must be a root. And a root means if we put four into this, the answer will be zero. So that's the simplest way to do it. Simply put four into this and we get zero equals. Put four in, we get zero here. Uh, four in, we get 16. Uh, plus 4b minus 12. Uh, rearrange all this, we'd get uh, 4b is equal to minus 4. That's b is equal to minus 1. Uh, another slightly longer way, but still fairly straightforward way, is if this is a factor, that means it multiplies by something else to make this. So x minus 4 multiplied by something equals x squared plus bx minus 12. Um, and there's something here, it has to be just an x because we need x times x to get x squared. And just some number, like let's say plus a. Uh, we just don't know what a is. And uh, that, that, this seems a bit silly and a bit complicated to do, but it's not really because the only way we could get minus 12 is for minus four multiplied by a. So uh, the only the only app number that could be there is three. So without doing much work, we now know both factors. Um, and then we can just find out what B is by finding what terms get the X's. So minus four times X uh, plus three times X. And uh, that would be minus X. Again, I don't care about X squared. I don't care about 12. Um, minus x has to be the middle bit. So that means b is minus one again. And the last one, I won't do it all out, but it's, it's my favorite way of doing these questions. Um, it's dividing. If this is a factor, then that will divide into x squared plus bx minus 12 evenly. And um, whatever, whatever remainder you get has to equal zero. And so a, little, a lot longer. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do this question with this med. But I, I love uh, dividing whenever I get a chance for um, F in algebra. Okay, uh, let me clean this off and we'll do part B. Okay, in part B, they give us two functions, fx and gx. And um, in B part one, they ask you to find the value of f 1.2. Uh, very, uh, very straightforward, just put that in a calculator. The only slight trick is they want you to write the answer in the form of in scientific notation or exponential notation, I can't remember the other word, um, in the form of a times 10 to the power of n. Well, I'll show you what that means now. Uh, so this is equal to just e9 multiplied by 1.2. Uh, 9 times 1, 9, uh, e to the power of 10.8. Just put that into a calculator. Uh, by the way, some calculators will even give you uh, it in scientific notation. But the calculator will tell you 49020.8. I'll round it off there. 49,000. Um, but scientific notation, if numbers are really big, they can just get messy to work with. This, this isn't too big. But um, if they're really, really big, like uh, the size of the Earth, the number of atoms in the Earth, or something like that, uh, we use scientific notation. Scientific notation just says, let's put the decimal after the first number. So uh, this will equal, let's put it here, 4.9. How many decimal places do they want? Uh, they just want one, so uh, that rounds off, zero rounds off to the line. 4.9 times 10 
to the power of something. So basically that means instead of writing 49,000, how about I write 4.9 times 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000? In this case, it'd be 10,000. It'd be, uh, I'm moving the decimal one, two, three, four, four times. Or 10 to the four is 10,000. 10,000 times 4.9 is 49,000. So that's the only, make sure you remember how to do um, scientific notation. In part two, they tell us that GX is equal to 3.5. Um, give your answer in the form of e to the power of p. Uh, so find, find the value of x, basically. But your answer is going to be in the form of e to the power of something. Um, okay, so let's take this function here. We'll take uh, 3.5 is equal to natural log of the square root of x. Now, uh, uh, one bit of advice um, for maths is, it's a very simple thing to do. I, I hate to say it always works, but I, I, I try not to write square roots. I pretty much always write to the power of a half. And uh, that's because so many of the rules you learn are about powers um, and they're the same thing, the square root is just a shorthand, so it's much quicker to write square root than a half. Uh, but you'll end up finding the power of a half just works out a little easier. Um, at least helps students remember a bit better. Uh, because there's a there's rules about natural logs. They're in your uh, tables book, I don't know. I don't have my tables there now. But they're in your tables book, there's lots of rules about them. And one of the rules says when you have a log of a number to a power, that's equal to the power coming out front, natural log x. And again, still equals 3.5. Uh, let's rearrange that. 2 multiply both sides by 2, we get 7 equals natural log of x. Now next, we just have to get rid of the natural log. Uh, what destroys natural log? Uh, putting an e on both sides. That destroys the natural log, or um, putting both sides over an e. Uh, the left side is e to the 7, and the right side just becomes x. x equals e to the 7, which, and that's what they wanted. They wanted e to the power of something, and uh, yeah, that's the answer, part 2. Okay, part 3, they want you to, yeah, they want you to write g of f of x in the simplest uh, form. So let's uh, just get going. g of x is the natural log of the square root of of uh, whatever's inside it. So g of x is the natural log of the square root, I'll write square root as the power of a half, of whatever they gave me. They gave me fx. So what's fx? fx is e to the 9x. And that's that's all they've uh, uh, given me here. Um, we can rearrange this a few different ways. We can equal natural log e to the 9 over 2x. One of the rules for powers is that um, they just multiply, or, or you could have brought it out first. Either way, uh, next thing, the rule we just did there, we could we bring this power out front, we get 9 over 2x multiplied by natural log of e to the power of 1 is left, so that's just 1. So the answer is just 9 over 2x. I uh, just realised my notes, I did that slightly different, so let me do it again just because um, Students probably did it different. How about from this line up here, if I just took the half outside at that point, half natural log e 9 to the power of x. At this point, the natural log and the e cancel, and we're just left with a half 9x, which is 9 over 2x. Same answer is there. Okay, that's it for question six. If I made any mistakes, or if you have any follow-up questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a great day.